Hey everybody, it's low carbon keto nutritionist Amy Berger from toitnutrition.com bringing you another video on how to do keto without the crazy. Uh, let's see, it is, what date is it? It's February 12th, Wednesday, February 12th, and um, I'm sorry that there hasn't been a video in a couple of days. You might notice my voice sounds a little funny. When I came home from Metabolic Health Summit, my, my last video was, you know, checking in from that event, I lost my voice. And I wasn't sick in any other way. I didn't have a cold, I didn't have a cough. There was nothing. My voice just went away for a couple of days. And um, yesterday was kind of the first day that I was able to sound almost normal. And today it's not 100%, but it's close. And I didn't want to wait any longer. I don't like to go too long without doing a video. So here we are. And uh, apartment's a mess. I uh, am preparing to leave town. So, you know, don't look at the mess. Just, you know, focus on the information. So let's see, before we get into business, uh, next event I will be at where you can meet me at person, in person is in Winchester, Virginia on Saturday, March 14th. I will be in Winchester, which is just about an hour or 90 minutes or so west of Washington, DC. Uh, I've been to Winchester many times. I used to live in Northern Virginia, love Winchester. Come see us there. You can find the link below. Um, as always, lots of links below to, um, th there'll be a, a, a note that says meet me in person and there'll be a link to my website where you can find more information and tickets for this event in Winchester. And uh, Eric Westman will be at that event. Um, some local doctors and nutritionists in Winchester will be there. So we'll see you on the 14th. Amy, shut up, stop talking, okay. Oh, one more thing before, before we get into matters. Um, you may or may not have watched my other recent video on the keto condiment unboxing. I was just showing you some stuff that I had bought. I'm gonna show you a couple more things right now because I just bought one of these tonight. Um, and no affiliate link here. I get no money if you buy these. I'm just telling you about cool stuff that makes my keto life easier and more delicious to stick to. You might be familiar with the Walden Farms brand. I know it's hard to see on the video, Walden Farms. You can get this at pretty much any supermarket. They're basically fat-free, sugar-free, carb-free, gluten-free, cholesterol-free, calorie-free. They're probably not calorie-free. It's just very, very, very low in calories. So that even if you use a large amount, it doesn't really add all that much, you know, food energy. Now, Walden Farms makes a ton of different products. It's very hit or miss. They make jams and jellies, they make lots of salad dressings, they make barbecue sauces, they make all kinds of like chocolate sauce, marshmallow fluff, um, all of it, you know, low to no calorie, low to no carb, all that stuff. What? What? Low calorie? Low fat? Yes, you know that what makes a ketogenic diet or what makes a product sort of keto friendly is not gobs and gobs and gobs of fat. It's the absence of the sugar and starch, the absence of the carbs. So it's okay to eat stuff that's low in fat or low in calories as long as it's also low in carbs. It doesn't have to be super high in fat. I just wanted to show you, um, like I said, it's hit, it's hit and miss. I really, really like some of the Walden Farm salad dressings and others not so much. The sesame ginger is very yummy, in my opinion. I like it a lot. Um, I, I don't ever really use it on salad, actually. I use it on like stir fries. I use it on grilled or baked chicken, just having a chicken breast with some of this on it. Yes, that can be keto. Remember, it's not the presence of the fat, it's the absence of the carbs. This one, I just tried for the first time tonight. They were on sale, buy one, get one free. And I'm like, well, you know, for buy one, get one free, I'm willing to try one that I've never tried before. It's the Chipotle Ranch. And I gotta say, not disappointed. This one was pretty good. It had a little kick to it. It was kind of spicy. So um, you purists out there, you food purist and you artificial sweetener zealots and you whatever zealot you are with food, you would be horrified if you looked at the label. So you're not gonna buy this and that's fine. Those of us who are okay with, you know, buying and eating and stuff can buy and eat it. So Walden Farm, Chipotle Ranch, Sesame Ginger, both very good. I like a lot of other Walden Farms products that I'm not gonna get into today. I just happened to buy the Chipotle Ranch like an hour ago, so I'm showing it to you. Okay, almost five minutes in. Let's talk about staying off the mother friggin' effin' ever lovin' blah, 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 insert expletives scale. 
before I forget, if you are concerned with what's going on on the scale or what's not going on on the scale, please remember I am coming out hopefully very soon with a new book. It's called The Stall Slayer. It is about breaking fat loss stalls on low carb or ketogenic diets. You can download a free preview to it. There'll be a link below. Um, as soon as you click the link, the PDF will download. So it's just a preview. Check that out. I hope to have the PDF of the whole book available within the next two to three weeks. Can't guarantee that because I thought it was going to be done like six months ago. It's okay. It's going to be awesome when it is ready. Keep your eyes out for that. Now, and let's... I also want to bring your attention to a, an article that I just wrote for my friend Martina's website, ketodietapp.com, ketodietapp.com, and there's a blog. And I, um, I will also, I'll put a link so you can, you know, find it very easily. The most recent article, it just was published a few days ago. It's about staying motivated during a weight loss or a fat loss stall on keto. You know, if it's been weeks or months where your weight isn't changing and maybe even your shape isn't changing, your size isn't changing, how do you stay motivated? How do you get yourself to stay with keto? All the tips will be in that article I'm linking to. And as long as I'm mentioning Martina, she's a cookbook author. She wrote the Keto Diet Cookbook. She wrote Quit Keto, Meals and Minutes. Keto Simple, she's got a ton. You can find them on Amazon. Her name, her last name is Slayerova. I think she's Eastern European. S-L-A-J-E-R-O-V-A, -E Martina Slayerova. But to make life easy for you, I'll just put links. Anyway, she's got a really, really great website. Very informative, very educational. And I write for her because she's great. So, the scale. Do you understand how misleading the scale is? Now, you have to understand that your weight fluctuates so much. Not, not so much like up and down 10 or 20 pounds, but I mean, it fluctuates from day to day, from hour to hour, it fluctuates. That's not really your body fat fluctuating, it's your weight. Your weight on the scale, do you know what weight is? Weight is a unit of measure, and what it measures is the force of Earth's gravity upon your physical mass. It says nothing about what that physical mass consists of. It says nothing about how much fat is on your body versus how much muscle versus how much bone versus tendons, ligaments water, fluid, all this stuff. It's just your weight. This is why you will probably see people post pictures. In fact, Ted Naiman has a great one on his website. I'll link to it where there's a picture, you know, people will show pictures. They are the exact same weight, but they look completely different. Their body composition is completely different. They, in one picture, they're much more doughy, they're much more squishy, they're, they have a higher fat percentage versus another picture at the exact same weight, the exact same scale weight, they are carrying much, much less body fat and either more muscle mass or the same amount of muscle mass, but it looks like more because the fat has shrunk so much. Same weight. Um, well, no, actually, I guess they would have gained muscle mass if it's the same weight. Anyway, um, if, before I even say anything else, let's get one point clear. Your scale weight is not the judge and jury of your worth as a human being. Can I say that again? Your scale weight is not the judge and jury of your worth as a human. It's not the arbiter of whether you are a good person or a moral person or a, a good, kind, trustworthy, responsible human being. It is, it's just the force of Earth's gravity upon your physical body. And I'm gonna, do, I keep saying I'm gonna do a video on health at every size at some point. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are not dependent on your scale weight. And I stole that from a size activist that I will quote in that other video. Um, being happy, living a happy life, doing things you love, being loved by other people and loving yourself has nothing to do with your scale weight. Okay, now, 
I very, very much discourage people from weighing themselves every day, precisely because so many of you do not have a deep enough appreciation for the natural, totally normal little blips up and down from day to day in your weight that have nothing to do with changes in your body fat. So if you are starting out on a low carb or ketogenic diet or any other diet for that matter, at a very, very high weight, let's say you are living with obesity or morbid obesity and you, your scale weight is very high. You might, your situation's a little different because you will be losing weight pretty steadily. If you, on the other hand, are looking to lose the last five, eight, 10 pounds, it's going to come much more gradually and you're going to be a lot more subject to little blips that that aren't reflective of you gaining or losing fat right like we all kind of know the larger you are the heavier you are when you start out with this way of eating the more quickly the weight comes off and the more steadily it comes off until you know a lot of people it kind of levels out and slows down sometimes it stalls and hits a plateau now I'm going to quote from some stuff because you have to understand how this works. You know, weight, weight loss in an ideal world, in a magical world where everything worked perfectly, you would lose a little bit of weight every single day in a steady diagonal line downward. Every single day, it would be a few ounces, a few pounds, la la la, like until you magically arrived at your goal. In the real world, with real human bodies, especially real female human bodies with all our crazy hormonal roller coasters, but this happens to men too, it's more like a stair-step pattern, right? You're kind of, you're flat, you're down, you're flat, you're down, you're flat, 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 down. Maybe you're up a little. Maybe you're flat, maybe you're up, you're flat, you're back down. It's a little squiggly pattern, but the squiggle pattern is squiggle, squiggle, up, down, stay the same, up, down, stay the same, up, down, stay the same, up, down. But over time, over the long haul, that squiggle pattern of, of daily blips up and down or staying the same, over the long term, the pattern is edging downward. That's what you have to understand. So if you, if you are someone that weighs yourself every day, just take it for what it is it's information it's just data and you know some people weigh themselves daily because they feel it holds them accountable right um that's fine i i understand that if you want to do that and it helps you do it but if that scale weight ruins your day ruins your mood breaks you emotionally first thing in the morning don't do it or do it at most once a week, once every two weeks might be even better. Um, if, if you are using the number you see on the scale as the judge and jury of whether you need to fast that day or starve for the next four days or whether you need to be on the treadmill for four hours after work, you got to cut that out. That is not a healthy emotional place to be. Now, if you can use it as just information and look again at that general pattern over time, take a weekly average, take a monthly average and see how things are going over time, then it's useful. And um, let's see, you just, you have to understand that it's normal to have these fluctuations. It's just the human body, right? So let me read some stuff. The first thing I'm gonna read is from The Art and Science of Low Carbohydrate Living. And it's by Jeff Bolick and Stephen Finney, who, if you haven't been living under a rock, you've heard those names before, you've heard them for a long time. They are two of the most well-known, most well-respected, most long-term, you know, most long-lived active careers in publishing scientific research on low-carb and ketogenic diets. Dr. Volick is quite a bit younger than Dr. Finney, but I can tell you, I know that Dr. Finney has been publishing research on this since at least 1983. When I was five years old, Dr. Finney was already publishing on the ketogenic diet. So what am I trying to say? These guys know what they talking about. Now, 
Let me find the place that I wanted to read. La la la. Okay. It's highlighted. It's got the strip. Quote. Don't trust the bathroom scale with your mental health. Amen and hallelujah, Dr. Spinney and Bullock. Don't trust the bathroom scale with your mental health. Whew. We humans are about two thirds water. Each of us contains about 40 liters or quarts of the stuff and each liter weighs a bit over two pounds. Our bodies effectively regulate fluid balance by adjusting urine output and sense of thirst, but this is done within a two liter range. Within this range, your body doesn't really care if it is up to a liter above or below its ideal fluid level. What this means is that we all live inside a four pound wide gray zone so that from day to day, we fluctuate up or down, i.e. plus or minus two pounds. This happens more or less at random. So with any one weight reading, you don't know where your body is within that fluid range. Your weight can be the same for three days in a row and the next morning you wake up and the scale says you've gained three pounds for no apparent reason. For people who weigh themselves frequently, this can be maddening. It can be a lot more than maddening. Now I will skip two pages. Most people think that if they do an intense workout, say 90 minutes of circuit training in a gym, that they should lose weight. And indeed, if you weigh before and right after such a workout, the scale goes down because of sweating and water weight loss. However, if it makes you sore for the next few days, don't be surprised to see the scale go up. That's because muscle soreness indicates that your muscles are temporarily inflamed and inflammation causes fluid retention and swelling inside that muscle. Once again, don't let the scale make you crazy. Once the soreness is gone, the swelling is gone and the scale comes back down to where it's supposed to be. I repeat again, don't trust the bathroom scale with your mental health. Um, this is totally normal. I've experienced this. You might have experienced this yourself. You know, working out makes me feel good mentally, physically. It really does a lot of good things for me, but if for some reason I have to take a few days off from the gym, I notice I feel leaner for lack of a better word. That's not really the word, but it's less puffy. I feel smaller. I feel lighter in my skin, in my own body because I am, because I haven't taxed my muscles. I haven't inflamed my muscles. My muscles are not holding on to water. So you kind of are not leaner, but you're more lithe, more, light on your feet, you are carrying less fluid. So that's, um, you know, that's straight from the mouths of the experts. And I will put a handy dandy link to this book down below if you'd like to buy it. I do think this is one of the best books to read, whether you're new or not, if you're not new, but you want to understand the science of this a little better. Um, this is very layperson friendly. You don't need a PhD to understand this book. You don't need um, to be a doctor. You don't need to be an expert in the science. They, they're writing very scientifically, but you don't need to be a scientific expert to understand it. They're writing it for the person out there who wants to understand why does low carb work the way it does? Why is it not harmful for me to eat fat and all that good stuff? Now, the next thing I want to do and we're almost at 19 minutes and I'm so hungry. I don't want this video to be too long, but it's going to be because it's a really important topic and I want to cover everything I have to cover. Then I got to go eat. I want to read you some excerpts from my forthcoming book, The Stall Slayer. Free, free sneak peek. And this isn't even the free sneak peek you can download below. Chapter one, is it really a stall? No, the book is not going to look like this. This is the black and white stuff that I printed out on my home printer. Now, I don't want to read everything. So let me just skim here and see what I should read that would be useful to you. Okay. I, I, I'm just going to read and we'll see when I stop reading. Well, no, no, let's not. I don't want to, I don't want to give away the store. Then you'll have no reason to buy the book. Let's just say 
that I said weight loss is not linear, right? I don't know if you can see this. This is how we all want it to work. We all want it to go wee in a nice straight line down. This bottom image is how it actually works, right? It's up, it's down, it plateaus, it stays the same for a while, it goes down again. That's how weight loss works in the real world. Over the course of the months, years, or decades that you gained weight to get to where you are now, it's unlikely that you gained a couple of ounces steadily every single day until reaching your highest weight. It's more likely that it came on a bit at a time, stayed steady for a while, then increased a little more, stayed the same for another while, increased a bit more, and so on. The reason you didn't see your scale weight going up a little bit at once in the, a while and then staying the same for weeks or months is because you weren't getting on the scale every day. So just like you didn't gain a little weight every single day in a steady pattern, most of us don't lose weight every single day in a steady pattern. There'll be a bit of loss, then some amount of time at a steady weight, a bit of loss again, then another period of time at a steady weight, maybe a little bit of weight gain, then some loss again. Wait a minute. Whoa there. Did you just say weight gain, Amy? Did you just hold up weight gain? Yes. Here's the deal. Remember, remember what I said, scale weight tells you nothing about your muscle mass, your bone mass, your tendons, your ligaments, your water, anything else except the full force of Earth's gravity on your physical mass. And so um, do you guys know Megan Ramos and Jason Fung from uh, IDM, Intensive Dietary Management? They're now called TFM, the fasting method they've rebranded. But anyway, I've heard Megan tell the story of a client they once had who was gaining weight, you know, not a lot, but the scale was creeping up a little bit. And she was horrified because she was so strict with the diet. She was exercising. She was doing all of these great things. She's like, what is going on? This, I, I can't go on like this. I'm gaining weight. Well, guess what? This lady had osteoporosis. And so she had had like a DEXA scan or a bone scan or something in the past. And then she read it. Megan was like, take a breath, Mrs. So-and-so, take a, take a calm down. Let's get another scan. Let's see what's going on. You're gaining weight. It's only a few pounds, but you're gaining your concern. Let's see what this weight is made of. Well, guess what? She was rebuilding a lot of the bone mass she had lost. Her bone mass was increasing. Bones are not weight free bones have weight to them they have mass to them so this is weight she would have been happy to gain same thing if you were lifting weight and you are building muscle you could gain weight but your shape might be getting smaller you are getting i hate this word but you gals all freaking use it you're toning you're getting more toned but your scale weight could either be staying the same or possibly even increasing. You know, there's people who will gain weight and drop a dress size because the body composition is shifting. The fat is shrinking. The muscle is, is you know, growing. And um, if you have been chronically undernourished, like a lot of you have been, you know, we call it overfed and undernourished just because you have obesity or just because you have extra body fat on you doesn't mean that you have the amount of muscle mass that you might want to have or the amount of bone mass or tendons and ligaments and other connective tissue that have weight to them so let's say you were either under eating for a long time we women you know you could have been chronically under eating for a very long time in which case you would have jettisoned you would have gotten rid of some muscle mass some bone mass all of this good stuff that you want to have um so you now that you are nourishing yourself properly with good ketogenic low carb food now that you are giving your body things that it needs you might be gaining weight in the form of rebuilding bone mass, rebuilding muscle mass, rebuilding connective tissue, healthy, good, really important, critical weight that you want to have in your body. And if you just look at the scale, you will drive yourself absolutely bonkers. You cannot do this. You cannot let the scale play head games with you. You know what I mean? You, huh. all right, what else can I say? What else is in my book? 
So, all right, what we're talking, well, I already talked about weight versus fat, water weight, you know, women, especially with your menstrual cycle, you know, Finney, Finney and Volick said we fluctuate between a four pound range, like two pounds in either direction, up or down. I would say it could be even more than that for women during certain times of the month, or some people are sensitive to sodium. Some people, when they eat sodium or more salt, the body doesn't retain any water at all. Some people do. Does that mean you've gained body fat? No, it means you ate a lot of salt and your body is retaining water just like you would expect your body to do. Thank you, body, for working properly. How, how lucky am I that my body works properly, that I weigh more because I'm retaining water. Great. So, all right, talked about gaining good weight, menstrual cycle. I think that's all. Yeah, okay, good. So I don't really have to read word for word from my book, so I don't spoil it for you. Let me think if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about here. Yes, okay. One more sort of pretty important thing, in my opinion. You know, clearly the ketogenic diet and low carb diets in general are effective for so many things besides losing weight or losing body fat, right? The diet was literally created as a treatment for medication resistant epilepsy, for epilepsy that didn't respond to the drugs, you know, many, many decades ago. So it's great for epilepsy. We know it's a slam dunk for controlling blood sugar and insulin and type two diabetes. It works pretty well for type one diabetes. I did a video on that a while back. Um, PCOS, fatty liver, acid reflux, migraines, gout, you name it, low carb is really good for it. So not everybody does this to lose weight. So what does that tell us? That tells us that even if you're not losing weight, metabolically and physiologically overall, really good things could be happening. So if you are stuck in a weight loss stall or a plateau or whatever you wanna call it, and that damn scale weight isn't changing, good things are still happening on the inside. In fact, Dr. Volick, I don't think Finney was part of it, Dr. Volick's research group at Ohio State University in the US recently did a study where they proved that you could basically reverse metabolic syndrome even when people don't lose weight and they purposely chose subjects that were overweight, they had large waist circumference, they had metabolic syndrome, they were heavier people, um, and the study was specifically, they, they provided the subjects with the food, they specifically designed the study so that people would not lose weight. They wanted to prove that even in the absence of losing weight, cutting the carbs way, way down still has really good metabolic effects. The blood sugar still comes down, the insulin comes down, the liver enzymes come down, all the inflammatory markers come down, all the triglycerides come down, HDL goes up, and guess what? All of that is exactly what happened. Um, so that's, that's one of the points I make in that article I'll link to on Martina's blog about staying motivated during a stall. You know, please celebrate the things that are happening on the inside, even if you don't see anything happening on the outside. And remember, you might see something happening on the outside, even if that stupid derm scale number isn't changing, right? I said, your shape could be changing. If your clothing is looser, if your rings are falling off you, um, the scale is, like I said, if you're starting out from a fairly high body weight, the scale can be very helpful, you know? Um, especially if you really, really have a lot of weight that you're carrying, it's entirely possible that you could lose 10 or 15 or 20 pounds and not even really notice it, not feel it in your own body, maybe not even feel it in your clothing, right? So in that case, the scale could be very helpful for you. You could be, oh, oh my God, I've lost 12 pounds, but I don't even, I didn't even notice. I didn't, you know, so that's totally cool. You know, on the other hand, like I said earlier, if you're starting out already pretty close to your goal weight, you don't have that much to go. Um, a tape measure is probably a much better gauge of how your plan is working for you than a scale is. And especially if you're working out regularly, if you're trying to build muscle mass, if you're lifting weights. Um, and of course, a tape measure can be a fabulous tool for anyone at any size, bigger folks too. Um, but you, 
we see this all the time. You can get smaller, you can lose body fat, your shape can change even if the scale doesn't change at all or changes a lot less than you think it will, right? Some people, I see women posting online like, I only lost four pounds, but I lost two dress sizes. Cause that's how it works. That's how it works. It's not all about the scale. Don't live and die by the scale. I really, I don't like for people to weigh themselves more than once a week. But like I said, just, just to sort of go back to the, if you are a daily weigher, if you are someone who feels like you need that to keep you accountable, that's cool. But like I said, take it for what it is. It's data, it's information. Don't let it ruin your day. Don't let it make you cry. Don't let it set the tone for your day. Um, what else? That's really it, I guess. Um, get get a pair of pants or a skirt or a dress or a something, whatever you wear that doesn't fit or that's really tight and try that on twice a month. That's going to tell you way more than the scale is going to tell you, especially if you are close to that goal weight. I Scales just drive me nuts. I mean, my God, I... I'm not saying I wish they had never been invented. They serve a purpose. I'm not anti-scale. I'm anti using the scale when you don't have a good appreciation for the normal, totally expected physiological fluctuations from day to day, a couple pounds up, couple pounds down, stay the same for a while. Um, just, just like I, I say the exact same thing about measuring ketones or me even measuring blood glucose sometimes. I sometimes wish people would not measure because they freak out when they see one number at one point in time and they don't understand how to interpret it within the larger context of all the different things that are going on in their diet, their life, whatever. 32 minutes, time for me to stop talking. Do check out that free preview of the Stall Slayer, hopefully coming any day, any week now. Um, read, read that post I wrote on staying motivated during a stall. I think there's going to be some good stuff in there for you. And I'm going to link to a post on my own blog that was something about a new, like a new perspective on fat loss or weight loss on ketogenic and low carb diets. And it's, it's where I show that same chart of like the magical weight loss down to your goal versus the stair step squiggly pattern that we all go through. And, you know, emphasizing again in that, in that blog post that even when the scale isn't changing, good things are happening metabolically on the inside. Like I just, I just had a client today, literally just today. Her main reason for contacting me is that she's stalled. She's been stalled for a long time in the weight loss, but looking at her blood work, looking at her paperwork, she is healthy off the charts. Her A1C was like 4.9, triglycerides were like, 50 or 60 something, HDL was 50 or 60 something, fabulous ratio. Um, everything looked really good metabolically, physiologically. She was just heavier than she wanted to be. So, you know, I really tried to emphasize with her, you're doing great. Let's just figure out why the weight isn't moving. But clearly we know the diet's working for you. And I know you're sticking to the diet. I know you're not lying to me because your blood work tells me you're sticking to it, right? So, that's all there is to that. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in Winchester on the 14th. And that's it. See you next time. Bye-bye.